Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, I just want to say how excited I am to have Tracy with us. Tracy's killer, killer busy. And Tracy is, um, she is brilliant when it comes to building her business. She is, um, she did Diamond Club and rocked Diamond Club out. And um, she has been amazing. And um, so with Tracy, how Tracy and I met, I started doing tap reading when I started building my business before I even knew what tap reading was. And um, so it just so happened that I, I ended up reaching down to Tracy just out of the blue. It was just a cold, a cold reach. And in taking the chance to doing that cold reach, I ended up making an amazing friend. And um, so I'm super, super excited to have you with us, Tracy. And um, I can't wait to see what you have to say. Well, thank you so much. Um, you didn't ask me to tell you my business secret, but I'm going to share my business secret with everyone. To, my secret to my success. And I learned it pretty quickly. And that is listen to Romy and do whatever Romy tells you to do. <laughs> so the fact that you're all here on this call, you already got the secret. So just do what Romy tells you to do. And that works every time. For jumping out of the plane, won't listen to you there. Okay. I've got like a ninety-nine percent track record, so proud of that. <laughs> um, so, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Tracy Kennebec. I am originally from Central Illinois, but I live and build now in Missouri. For those of you who aren't familiar with Missouri, that is the Show Me State. That is our state motto. is on our license plates because I guess we have a bit of a reputation for being a little bit stubborn. Uh, it's a fact that our state animal is the mule. That could be coincidence or not. I don't know. Uh, but another thing that we're famous for is the 33rd president of the United States, and that's Harry Truman. And if you know anything about Harry Truman, he was famous for, um, for a lot of sayings. And, and one of them was really the fact that he was a plain speaker. He was famous for his plain speaking. And what that means is he didn't use fancy words. He didn't, you know, give unnecessary words in it. He just went straight to uh, the subject and spoke very plainly. So that is what I want to do tonight when I talk to you about doTERRA. I want to give it to you straight. I want to tell you plainly that there's some hard truths you have to learn when you're doing doTERRA as a business. But the good news is, is that there's good news about each one of them. So let's start. The first one, first hard truth that you have to learn in your doTERRA business is that doTERRA isn't magic. I know the oils themselves seem like they're magic, like you put them on and it's like, oh my gosh, I can't say anything now on this call because it's being recorded and it would be compliant. But trust me, we all know they do magical things. I think magic is a compliant word. I'm not quite sure. So, um, but when it comes to the business, there's nothing magic about it. Uh, Eric Worre, a lot of you will be familiar with Eric Worre, he said if you really want to make it in network marketing, you have to remember that it's not a shortcut to do less and to get more. You have to put work in to make it happen. So a lot of us maybe were promised, like, oh, this is great, you'll be rich, you've got all this stuff, we'll go on trips. But like any business, you've really got to invest up front not only with your time, but financially. So I have several friends that own their own brick and mortar businesses. One's a bookstore, one's a boutique, and they had to invest huge amounts of capital in it to get their business started. And matter of fact, they not only did not turn a profit for the first several years, they were lucky to even break even. So the good news about doTERRA is that we have something that's called Fast Start. And that is what that is. It's meant to be a fast start to your business. So although it seems like, oh, that's money I made. I'm going to go buy a new pair of shoes. No, no, no. That is actually meant to be money to invest back in your business. So that's the good news. I mean, you, you get money back. And truthfully, it's, it's a small investment that we have to make every month. And guess what? We get to use the product. It's not like we're running a store and we're paying for electric bills and stuff that's kind of boring. It's like we get oils. That's awesome. The second hard truth that we have to learn when we're doing our doTERRA business is that people are going to enroll with someone, even if it's not you. This one's really tough, especially for new people, because they're like, oh, I don't want to be pushy. I don't want to be salesy. But the truth is people are going to be using essential oils now more than ever. doTERRA has been experiencing record amounts of enrollment. Uh, every year it just gets more and more and it really at this point shows no sign of slowing down. So they're still breaking, crushing, um, enrolling um, marks and membership. 
quotas. So people out there are going to be enrolling. It might as well be with you. So go get them, stay with them, uh, let them know you want them on your team. There's gonna be times along the way where you're either not gonna be very clear about that you're doing this as a business and you want people, or even you might have somebody come and literally cross recruit and pull someone out from under you. That's okay. It's gonna happen, you're gonna be okay. The good news about this is that there's plenty of people to go around, plenty of people. So remember that people need this and go out there and enroll them. The third hard truth is that you're gonna make placement mistakes. Now I say that in air quotes because I like to talk with my hands and also because I don't like to call them mistakes because to me there's no mistakes where you do your placement. There's a whole lot of, well, if I could go back and do it differently, I would have put somewhere else, but guess what? Remember number one, doTERRA isn't magic. We don't have a crystal ball. Um, so the, the good thing is that you can always use volume to make up for any missteps you might make along the way. So for example, if you enroll someone and you think, oh yeah, okay, maybe they'll buy a couple more oils and you put them on your third line and they turn out to go like crazy diamond and you're going to think, oh, I wish I would have kept them on my front line. Well, so what? So they're on your third line. No big deal. You still get paid on many levels under them and you still benefit from having them on your team. If you could go back and do it differently, would you? Maybe, but then again, it's okay. Because if you enroll one person this month and you end up putting them accidentally in the not the best spot, see, there's my quotes again, not the best spot. And, and that messes up your power of three or your rank or something, that's gonna be crushing. But if you put one person in kind of the wrong spot, but you have 10 other people to place, that totally makes up for it. So the good news is that um, volume makes up for any missteps and also unit level. You make unit level off of anybody. So if you put them on your third line, you actually end up making more than if you're on your first line. And if you miss out on a line or two because they end up going diamond, no big deal, you'll be fine. The fourth hard truth is that not everyone is going to build this business no matter how perfect they are for it. I can't tell you the number of times I have people come to me and say, I just enrolled someone today. She is awesome. She knows a bunch of people. She does yoga. Um, she's a chiropractor. She's a teacher. Like they have all these criteria that they swear is going to make the best builder in the world ever. And she may be perfect on paper or he, don't be sexist, Tracy, but let's face it, 99% of the times so it's going to be a woman, but they may be perfect on paper, but think about dating. Remember personal ads back in the day before the internet? Someone can say, you can be looking for someone who's six foot tall with blue eyes and brown hair. And then the, the, someone answers your ad that has that. And then when you meet them in person, there's just not that spark. It's kind of like this with building. Um, some of the advice, and when, when I was originally putting this presentation together, I'd asked a lot of diamonds and above for their advice on things. And actually our upline, Natalie Rigby, had given her advice to keep enrollment or secure enrollment of your builders if they're below a non-builder. It's okay to have non-builders on your team. I always say I could build an empire off of people who just use this because that's all we need is people just to order and use it. Um, and, but the good news is that people are gonna surprise you. Remember how I said you're gonna put someone on your third line and think, oh, they'll just use it occasionally and they're gonna take off? That's the best surprise of all. The good news is you're always gonna find someone take off that you didn't necessarily expect them to. And I have a little bit of a bonus truth on this one, just an extra. Just know this is a hard fact, but you're actually not entitled to have anybody put under you by anybody in your upline and you're never entitled to have that enrollment transferred to you. That's a really hard truth that a lot of people have to learn. I never had to learn it because nobody's ever placed a single person under me. So I don't know what it's like to learn it, but I've heard and I've seen. So just keep that in mind. The fifth hard truth is that your upline is not perfect. Oh, I know, even Romy. But she's really close. She's super close. So you don't have to be a clone of your upline. If your upline built their entire business through social media like Romy does, you don't have to do it that way. If your upline built their business because they traveled around the world for two years without stopping, you don't necessarily have to do that. They're not experts. They do have great experience, stories, and things that you can benefit from, and they've seen a lot. But the good news about this is you aren't perfect either. So as you grow your team, I kind of like to feel, not that I necessarily believe in karma, but 
if you give a little graciousness to your upline that they're not going to be perfect, hopefully you get that graciousness from your downline that you're not going to be perfect because you're going to screw up sometimes too or whatever. So that's the good news is nobody has to be perfect in this business. The next hard truth is um, not everyone is going to like or appreciate you. Oh, this is a really hard one to learn because when you first start building your business, who's like the first person you sign up? like your best friend or your mom or your neighbor. And of course they like you. And then you sign up maybe one of their friends and then they like you too. And so you just think, oh my gosh, this is like the best job ever. It's just like a love fest. Well, guess what? As like your friend signs up their friend who signs up their friend who signs up their friend, there's going to be people that don't like you. And there's certainly going to be people that don't appreciate you. And you know, like I mentioned in the last one, as their upline that you have all these stories and great experiences and like, why don't they want to learn from me? It's okay. We have what we call the grandma theory. And so you know how sometimes you know, like when you want something as a kid, you knew which parent to go to, or maybe not even to go to your parent, just to skip and go right to grandma. That's what's awesome about the team model that we have. If one of my downline doesn't like me, no big deal. They can just go to someone else in the upline or even cross line. That's the great thing is you can learn from anyone and you can get support from anyone. They're not necessarily going to have to get everything from you because remember, you're not perfect. See how these work together? They're brilliant. Uh, the good news about that is that you don't have to be all things to all people. How exhausting would that be? You can always just get to know people and be friends with them. Even if they don't want your business mentoring or your vast experiences or your great stories that you have, you can just still get to know them. And at the very least, if they're on your downline, you still earn off of them. So they don't have to like you. You're still getting a check, by the way. Thank you, Romy, for smiling on that one. Um, the next uh, hard truth to learn is that only a small amount of your rank is about you right? This would be so great. I would love to stand here and be like, I'm Blue Diamond because I am so awesome. I mean, I am awesome this much, but that Blue Diamond really has not a lot to do with me. It has everything to do with the relationships that we have on our team and also how much we've helped others. So really, it's a reflection of how much you've helped others. A lot of you are familiar with Neil Robert Anderson, who wrote the Being the Starfish book. He actually has a new book coming out called Jesus is Our Upline. And he's, he's saying in that book that rank and recognition don't matter as much as the person you become in the process. The carpet isn't worth sacrificing relationships and integrity. And I think we all know from every person on this team, from Romy all the way up to the top of this team, it's all about relationships and integrity. So I really love that. Uh, the good news about the fact that not everyone's going to like you, what's the good news about that? Um, <laughs> the good news is that you can use those relationships to build. And sometimes those people come around. I will tell the story, and this person might be on the call, but I know, I know there's people in my downline who haven't liked me, and there's people in my downline who still don't like me. But, I, and I wanted to grab them and be like, listen to me, I know things. I don't. So I just worked on the relationship and now they like me. Now we're friends. Now we hang out. It's awesome. So um, we also know from the Rigby's, right? They say a rising tide lifts all boats. So you work on those relationships and everybody, everybody elevates in the process. So it's all, that's what rank is really about, is reflecting how many people you've helped. Uh, the eighth hard truth that you may have to learn is that you don't get to stop working when you hit a certain rank. This is one, this is one, some of these you have to learn really quickly. Some of these you don't learn till way later. And I'm possibly still learning that. So a lot of people say, oh, well, when I get to X rank, I'll stop. And especially because we start out a lot of times with people and we say, you know, what would be your financial goal? And so for some people, it's just to get their oils paid for. Some people, you know, oh, I'd, I'd like about $1,000 a month. Okay. Maybe people say, if I could hit gold, that income. That would replace what I'm making right now. I could stop there. And so they kind of get this in their head that when I hit gold, I'll just stop. There actually is like no pausing <laughs> in doTERRA. Um, you get out of doTERRA what you put into it. So, you know, a lot of people say when you treat it like a hobby, you get paid like a hobby. But there's also no pausing. Uh, there's a blue diamond, Tanya Cottrell. And she says, if you take time off from your business before it's self-sustaining, you'll spend two to three times longer building back your momentum. She says, I've seen this happen even at the diamond level. And this is so true. And you may have people right now on your team, you may be one of them, 
that hit the summer slump and you think, I'm just going to take a couple months off to hang out with my kids and we're going to go on vacation and I just don't want to have to deal with working my business. Well, guess what? You take three months off in the summer. According to this formula, it's going to take two to three times as long just to get back to where you were. So now you have to spend all fall and winter just getting back to where you were, which is going to be somewhere around next April or May, just to get back to where you were. So that's why a lot of times people will get stuck at a level for several years because they take the summers off. So you can't take your foot off the gas. Um, it's also recommended to never move into manager mode. You should always be enrolling people. This is a hard one. I know this is a hard one for diamonds and above. See, so we're only shaking our head, yes. You get into this thing where you're like, look at all these awesome people. I just want to take care of them. But you always have to be bringing new people in because you're setting the precedent also, but it's, it's part of what we do. We can't ever stop doing our job. We just kind of add to it and change a little bit. The good news about this is that there will be a point where you couldn't stop even if you wanted to. It's very easy when you're manager, director, elite executive to be like, I'm just going to take a break. And, you know, I'll pick this back up when I'm done with my degree or whatever. But you will get to a point where you're like, oh, my gosh, like I could be I could be one of those stories where someone's dead in their apartment for five days and nobody notices until they have the smell and my team would still be growing. Like it is such a cool thing, not the dead part, but the growing part is super cool. So, and I hope no one's dead in your five days. Sorry, I, mean, I feel really bad if we found that out later, wouldn't I? I feel like, hey, guess what, Tracy? Whenever you were doing your thing, we bounce. Susie Smith was like stinking in her apartment for five days. But the good thing is, I hope she has her account like willed to somebody because her account will still be making money. It's awesome. All right, couple more. Uh, number 10 is you have got to do all the stuff. You can't just do what you're comfortable with. So this means classes, public speaking, the math, right? Oh my gosh, drams. Did you know what drams were before you did this? Holy cow, I'm like an 18th century chemist. So you got to know all the math. You got to do the taxes. You got to know a little bit about the science behind the oils. You don't have to be Dr. Hill, but you need to be able to answer a few things like of why does this tingle and this doesn't. You need to know some basics. The number one thing I hear from people is, oh, I can't do that. I'm an introvert. Guess what? I test all the freaking time in the Myers-Briggs. I'm the biggest, fattest introvert there is. I would literally never leave my house. Amazon helps. If I could get grocery delivery, I would literally never leave my house. I love my house. I love my couch. Thank you, Romy. You're with me. I know. She loves her house so much. She drives it everywhere she goes. So you, it, introvert doesn't mean incapable. If they, they wouldn't make a new word for it, if that's what it meant. Introvert just refers to how you recharge your battery. So I got to say this. This is, my, this is my issue. I could have done a whole class on this. Extroverts charge their batteries by being with other people. So these are the kind of people that like stop by happy hour on their way home from work. Or they want to go to the library to read a book. What the heck? Why would I go out in public to read a book? They want to sit and work on their computer at the coffee shop. What? No. That's how extroverts get their energy. Introverts can be around other people, but then we need time to go home with the quiet, play games on my iPad, right? Do a crossword puzzle, like go for a walk by ourselves. We just need to charge away. Or sometimes with like, you know, like it counts. My husband counts as being alone. Sorry, I don't know what that says about you. They count like, well, he's okay. He's in my inner circle. He's in my bubble. So that all counts, but you just, it just refers to how you recharge the batteries. So whether you're an introvert or not, you're going to have to do things you are not comfortable with. Okay. You're going to have to learn everything. You'll be good at what you're good at, but you also got to learn a little bit of the things you're not good at. And that's also what's nice about a team. If you don't want to do every class ever, you can work with people on your team, but there's going to be times where you have to speak. So you might as well get over it because we all do it. And there's not one person that goes up on that stage at convention. That's like, I love being in front of like 20,000 people and sweating profusely. Okay. I'm also going to throw in there that this is a big thing I've been talking about with my team lately is what worked two years ago doesn't necessarily work now. So you have to constantly be changing. You think if I could just write this paper, this handout, if I could just get this class down pat, then I'll know it. I'll never have to change it again. <laughs> Guess what? Staying the same is not normal. Change is actually normal. It's weird if things stay the same. So just when you get comfortable with something, guess what? It's going to change, but that's how it is. So, you know, Facebook parties, someone was mentioning that where you post like 10 different posts in an hour. That was like hot to trot two years ago. 
nobody does those anymore because they don't work the same. So go find the next big thing. Find the next big thing. I don't know what it is. Stand on the corner towards one of those signs. I'm kidding. That's like five years ago. Okay. The good news about that is that this will make you better. This will make you learn new skills. It will also make you be more sympathetic for people when they struggle on your team. So maybe you don't struggle with public speaking, but you struggle with understanding the tax code. You have someone on your downline who's like, whatever, I could do taxes all day. I hate speaking. You don't have to understand exactly what they've been through, but when you've done something you feel uncomfortable with and push through it, you're going to be able to better support people as they work through things that they're also uncomfortable with. Uh, number 11, this is another huge one. So I'm down to my big couple. They're not in any sort of order, but I kind of saved my favorite ones for the end. So it's one I say over and over again. If your husband, partner, wife, mother, cat, whoever, doesn't support you doing doTERRA, the problem is not doTERRA. The problem is not with the business. The problem is somewhere in that relationship. So I, you know, we hear a lot of times from people, oh, well, you know, my husband won't let me go do classes once a week. That's not the problem. doTERRA is not the problem. The problem is somewhere in the relationship. So I always tell people, if you go to your husband, boyfriend, partner, spouse, mother, squirrel, whatever, and you say to them, I, this is really important to me. I would like to go learn more about these oils or this is, you know, this is something that really lights me up and it, and it gives me, it makes me feel worth, like I'm worth more and I can really help people. And I would like to go one night a week and teach classes. And they say, I can't support you in doing that. Okay. I'm not a marriage counselor, but I'm just saying if the problem is not doTERRA. Okay. And my final hardest truth of all that I've had to learn and it's one I learned from Omi, not because, not because it was hard. I don't really have, because she, she has to repeat it to me. I have like my inner voice, uh, you know, like on the Wonder Years when it was narrated by, like Fred Savage was in it, but it was narrated by Daniel Stern. This is like Romy narrates my doTERRA business in my head. The hardest truth of all I've had to learn is that you can't want it more than that. Okay, remember we talked about someone may be perfect for this business, I don't know. I'm six foot tall. Maybe I would have been the world's best volleyball player, but I don't like to play volleyball. And no matter how much someone would have tried to force me to play volleyball, it was never going to happen until if, unless I was ready to play volleyball. I also have very dainty wrists. I don't feel like I could, that was it. So basketball, I'll do that. I could do that, but I was also slow and lazy at that. So that's a bad example. Um, but you know, Nat Natalie actually, uh, Natalie Rick actually told me this that also sticks with me is that you can't love people into this. This is something we all do again. Who's the first person we sign up? Our friend, our mom, our neighbor. And we know they're great and they love to talk to people and oh my gosh, and they have bills, they could use this money, but you cannot want it more than that. So the good news is that you can hold that space for them, right? And you can, you've got to meet them where they're at. And so you can still support them where they're at, meet them where they're at. And the good news is it, when they are ready, it's going to be so rewarding. I love, those are some of my favorite stories of people who come out of the woodwork after like years, sometimes years after they've enrolled with me and they're like, I'm ready to build my business. I'm like, are you serious? Yeah. Okay, let's go. And they take off and it's amazing. But if I would have pushed them earlier, we wouldn't have saved that relationship. That relationship wouldn't have been there. So you've got to do that. Uh, I want to close tonight with kind of an image, and if I was really technical, which <laughs> is not my strong suit, but I've had to learn a lot about it <laughs> because, you know, number 10. Um, but if you've ever seen the videos on how doTERRA sources their frankincense, if you've ever seen how they do that, it's very interesting. It's not like a lot of the other plants. To, to source the frankincense, they have these trees, and we all know about the regions of the world that they're in and how crazy, like, protected it is. And... Um, how rare it is to get this wonderful frankincense. They actually go and they gash the trees. They, they cut a slash into them. And then they come back later and they're, um, <laughs> they look like tears. They call them tears. But the, the sap, the resin actually comes out of the tree. And that's what they take and turn it into what is arguably the best oil we have. That may be subject to opinion. Um, certainly it's not necessarily the top seller because I don't put 
however many drops of frankincense in my water four times a day, like I do with lemon. But I think if I had to bring it down to one oil, I would have frankincense. So you have to remember that we are all like frankincense, right? Because all of these things we go through, when we go through these hard things in our business, it may cut a gash, right? But what's going to come out of that is going to be the absolute best thing of all. You're going to be so much better person, so much richer, have such a much more amazing life because of it. And just to keep that in mind with our actual bodies, you know, a lot of times our culture teaches us that, you know, scarring, like if you have a scar somewhere, that that's a, an abnormality, that that's, that looks less attractive than the skin that was there for, but I, before. But I want you to keep in mind that when you have a scar, that is not only your body's way of building, repairing yourself and building you up, but that skin that's there is actually stronger than the original skin was there. So don't be afraid to get out there and confront some of these hard truths and these hard facts because you are going to come out of it so much stronger. Thank you, Romy, for having me on. I'm waving. Holy oh, smokes. I told you guys she's brilliant. <laughs> that was really, really good. I loved that. Thank that you. Awesome, awesome. So um, let's take some comments or questions because I think this is a really good topic and the way that you presented it was very, very good. And you're very eloquent. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Don't be shy. This is Iris, and I just wish I could have gotten in on the beginning because it was fantastic, Tracy. I'll have to wait for the, the uh, recording. Thank you, thank you. That $20 check will be in the mail to you. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> yeah. So the, uh, the recording will be up, so I highly, highly recommend that you save it, rewatch it, and share it because – it's very valuable. It's good, good stuff in there. Yeah, especially that part about the dead body in the apartment. If you could really spread that far and wide, I think that's my inspirational message from all this. There you go. There you go. And the other part about listening to Romy. Oh, yes, that one. Well, definitely. Turn. <laughs> Put that on one of those, like, gifs that just repeat. Listen to Romy. Listen to Romy. That's right. Listen to Romy. That's right. Oh, my gosh. I have to give it to my kids. <laughs> oh, no. The kids won't listen to you. Sorry. I know. I do listen. Thank you very much. <laughs> it just took me a long time to figure out that one was right, actually. <laughs> Anybody else want to share? What's that takeaway? Anybody get an aha moment? <laughs> I love the part about not having to be perfect and really giving your upline a break because eventually you're going to be that upline. And um, that was something, and not to be the, the end all be all for everybody because that was something that I learned uh, the hard way. It's very, very exhausting. And so it is really, really important to learn to give people a break because it's just, there's a lot, a lot of stuff to this, and we just need to really be able to show people grace. So. Yeah, you never usually regret giving them a little wiggle room. Sometimes you regret if you snap down too soon. Exactly. And exactly. I, if you're going to regret one, I'd rather regret being too nice. Exactly. I agree. Smart Alec comments every once in a while. Those I enjoy. But other than that, I'd rather yeah. have chances. <laughs> That's why I get, if I get, I get, I type, and then I read, and then I delete, and then I type, and then I read, and then I delete. And it takes me about three or four times. If I have a moment, then it's, I just try and get myself to read, to process because, because I would feel horrible if I, if I did do something quick and, and hurt somebody just out of my reaction. So, yeah. We have lots of people on here. I know that you guys have a Clearly, my presentation was so encompassing. There's no questions in the world left. I know. Everybody got everything that they needed. <laughs> oh, do you know what? I'll ask a question. 
does anybody have anything that I didn't mention that was really difficult for you to learn and that you feel like a lot of people have to learn in doTERRA um, sooner or later? I would love to know if there's anything I can add to this list. I have one. I think, I think I'm sure you covered it in a roundabout way, but I think this self development, it's very comprehensive, Tracy. Um, I think, I think it's important that people remember that self development is unavoidable. When I first started, I was all like, I don't need to introspect. I'm just building a business. I can totally handle this. And honestly, I think I've been on like, like a nine month, discovery journey. I just told someone today, I'm like, convention is going to be my new year. Cause I think I finally might be done like the whole year of, of looking at stuff like, like what you talked about, what worked two years ago, isn't going to work now that you can't love people into their positions that you um, can't make people build the business. I, my neighbor's perfect for this. She doesn't want it. And I, yeah, I can't make her do it. Um, and all that has come about because I've followed all these other steps of, you know, reading the power, taking a minute to, to find a spirituality within myself that maybe didn't, I, I never knew it was there, honestly. So none of that would have come to me without trying to build this business. And to me, that's a little strange that essential oils have given me spirituality and taught me so much about myself. And I, of course I smell great. <laughs> and you know what? If you were the only one that said that, it would be like, mm -hmm. but everybody, I think everybody, even everybody on this call feels this way is that, wow, not that I was a big jerk before, well, <laughs> but I mean, we're all just so much better than we were like five minutes ago, let alone five years ago because of this. So I love that self-development is unavoidable. Yeah. It's totally what you become. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yep. So, and sometimes it's harder. Go ahead, Lydia. So your new people that you get, Tracy, if you, I'm sure you've heard it before. You want that, they're wanting to do the business, but they, uh, oh, I don't know enough, I can't teach a class. Oh, I don't know enough, I can't speak to people. How, how do you address that with your new people? So there's a couple things and there's a couple things that doTERRA does to actually help us be more effective with this. Um, you know, the fact that we have 14 days and again, let's not go back in time and be like, Oh, we used to have 30 days. That was great. But there's a lot of other companies that give you either no time or 24 hours. We have 14 days. So you place someone where you think they will work out best in those first 14 days. And if during those first 14 days, we always say move toward the people who are moving toward you. If those people are moving towards you and they're doing the things you're asking, like let's at least set up your first class. Then you can see about maybe there's a better spot for them on my team. They're really, they're really taking this and running with it. It's not just saying, I want to do the business. I want to do the business because if I had a nickel for everyone who wanted to do the business, I would be making like presidential diamond salary right now. Okay. It's not about what they say. Maybe that's what they say. It's about their actions. So with the first class, the general rule is you teach the first class for them you teach the second class with them and you support them for the third class why they teach it by themselves. And again, who had to like twist your arm to, well, maybe, maybe you had your arm twisted, but I mean, you know, like I mean, <laughs> all wanted this. And so there's a lot of things that we just had to do. And so the fact that you're there supporting them, they're in a better spot. The second part of that from doTERRA is the 90 day premiere move. So you can always tell people if they come in being like, I want to do this as a business, you work with them and you let them know, hey, 90 days, if you make premiere, I will move you up to my top spot on my front line. And you, we will go all the way, wherever you're at is fine, you can grow at your own rate. But like, if you wanna hit this and go right up to the top with me, you can have one of those top spots. So they've got 90 days to do that. So I know that's kind of a little bit more than you were asking, but you know, you just make it easy. You make it duplicatable. You go teach that first class for them. You don't, again, you don't teach it like Dr. Hill would. You just make it fun. And when they see like, dude, I could do that. Look at Tracy. She's a screw up. She talks about dead bodies and she's still got enrollments. So there you go. Anybody else? Oh my 
goodness. We need to unmute everybody because it is like a tomb. <laughs> All right. If nobody has anything else. Who did that? That was me. Sorry. If anybody else has any suggestions to and, and then is watching this on like delay or whatever later, like I would love it if they would message me or start a thread in Rockstars or whatever. I would love to know if there's things I could add to this. That's a great idea. Bertha, where did that go? Uh, Bertha says, I'd love to know how to approach folks about the business. Romy, you're the queen of getting people on the business like right away. That's not true. You answer and I'll follow up with you. Oh, my answer is I don't. <laughs> um, like number one thing is to, again, the relationship. So you can't just like find someone on the street and be like, hey, do this as a business. Like you have to do it as a relationship. And then the second thing is to foster a love of the product. So, and, and maybe it's just my bias because I did this for six months and then just like kind of accidentally started the business, um, mostly because I had to start earning money to pay for all the oils I was buying. We all know my shame. Um, Jack Kennebec yelling at me, um, <laughs> very quietly yelling at me, but you know, scornfully. Um, so I feel like, you know, they say it all the time at, at conferences and conventions is that 85% of the people who are leadership, meaning silver and above in this company did not come into it for the business opportunity. So my personal opinion is when you go chasing after people for the business opportunity, you're limiting yourself to that 15%. I would much rather just try to get people to love the oils. And then when they host that first class that I teach for them and I'm holding a stack of enrollments and I'm like, um, by the way, like you can make like 80 bucks just so you know, from this class. Ping, the light goes off. So that's the way I approach the business. That's just me. Romy's, Romy's got it down though. You I mean, she pulls in people all the time. I, I do. I agree though, but, um, with that, with that concept and I, and one of the things that made, it was kind of difficult for me when I started listening to other network marketers and their company in the other companies and stuff, which I highly, highly recommend building relationships with people in other network marketing companies just because because it really will foster that belief in that that love for being in the network marketing industry and really helping us to see that this is an amazing profession to be proud of being a part of um, however a lot of the network marketing companies approach business first product afterwards and I've always thought that doTERRA was different and so it is a matter of um, teaching people to love the oils and and if they love the oils sharing the oils is going to be natural and so one of the things that I do is the fostering of the relationship fostering of, of teaching them how to love the oils use the oils but then I, in conversation, as the relationships are building, I throw in third-party stories about income. So I will pick somebody, like Natalie, for um, example. For an example, when I first started, I, um, I knew that this was going to be something that, that I needed to be able to make an income. And so I just straight up asked her how much money she made. And she told me 5,000, and you guys have heard my story with this. If Natalie would have told me that she made $15,000, I would have thought that she was <laughs> because I already did not believe that network marketing was a viable way to make an income. I, um, I knew that I needed the oils, and I was hoping and praying that this was real when it came to income. So she kept it real for me. So when I share third party stories, I share third party stories that are believable. Do I have people in my life that make 15 and 20 and 25 and $30,000 a month? Yep, I do. But I don't want to scare them away. We actually had an experience um, when we were in Montana last summer, Mark was talking to somebody in the park 
And he was, Mark, you know, once you get a guy excited about doing this as a business and you get a guy excited about the oils, you absolutely, for the most part, can't shut them up. And so then you learn, okay, it's different. Guys do it differently. He doesn't have to do it like I do. And so I had to take a breath and learn that this is, this is how he's going to do it and backed off. But he, um, he started with a high dollar amount when he was talking to the guy. And he said, I could see his eyes just glaze over. And so we're telling true stories when we're telling big numbers. However, our belief is we all start at fairly small belief levels. And so we have to meet them where they're at with their belief levels. And so I very rarely share my income. I'm not afraid to say what my income is, but I believe that it is, um, it's more believable if I share, if I share a third party story of someone that is close to me. And so it works like that. And then that piques the interest. So it's just different things like that. So I always make sure that they know that there is an opportunity there, but it is the oils that are the number one focus in the beginning for me. You know, another great Romy lesson and story and advice is to just like live well. And it's not like we are not the network marketing companies that like pose outside of our castle with our yellow Lamborghini, but people in my life and on our team have definitely noticed that I went from like clipping coupons and like not ever going anywhere to now suddenly I'm in a new place like every month and I don't, you know what I mean? And I pick up the checks sometimes when we go out to eat, which I never would have done before. Um, so I wanted to, I just wouldn't have. <laughs> yeah. so they, oh, and without even saying, they see that we've moved into a bigger house. They see that we got a new van. Like, and again, it's not about the money, but they can see like what's changed about you. And they know nothing has changed. I did not win the lottery, but they know I'm getting an income from doing this. And they're like, so this really works, huh? And I'm like, yeah, kind of does like, kind of can't believe it myself either. But yeah. So that's another thing you said is make sure you always post when you get something. Um, like when I got my new iPad, it was always like hashtag thank you doTERRA because it wouldn't have been possible without doTERRA. And so even if you're not saying like use the oils, the oils are great or build this business, people start to see the change in your lifestyle monetarily and they're going to know this must work because so-and-so is doing it. Right. And I, I totally believe in, in sharing your lifestyle and you don't have to flaunt. It's, it is just a matter of sharing what you're doing, the fun things in your life. And you don't have to be making a ton of money and you don't have to be living an extravagant life to be able to show somebody that you have something that they, that they might want. It could be just uh, like your personal development, like Amy's talking about. I mean, a lot of people develop into a different person before their paycheck shows up. And so, so all of a sudden, you know, you're starting to notice that there's different things happening in this person's life where they seem to be a little bit happier. It's not this bitch and moan and groan, oh, woe is me lifestyle. It is, you know, life, life seems to be pretty good right now. And so it's just being real. And don't be afraid to be real. Because like Tracy said, we're all different. We're, none of us are perfect. And that was something that was really hard for me in the beginning, especially when we started doing like the hangouts and getting on the Zooms and stuff like that. It was like, oh my gosh, I don't want somebody to see me. What if I'm not perfect? You know? So, but it, it helps to see people get in there and not be perfect to know that we can do this and you just be authentic. If you make mistakes, you make mistakes. You're just, you're guaranteed you're going to make mistakes. So just own it and move on. Okay, I have a question. Um, Natalie and Burke, they went through the pyramid that I guess the Goddards have. Um, you know, it talks about the product and then, you know, the company and the then, and then you know, yourself. The you belief pyramid? Yeah. Uh -huh. and, and then where you can, you know, get, you know, get stuck and you can kind of get to a certain level just through generating, you know, activity. But at some point, you know, you just get only so high. 
how do you work on, and I may, I probably know this answer. I want to see, maybe there's a different answer. Uh, how do you work on that belief in yourself? <laughs> as far as, I guess, I guess breaking through and getting unstuck. How do you work on that? There you go. That belief. Look at my technical knowledge. Yeah. Shared. Yeah. Um, how, how do you work on that belief in yourself? I honestly, I think that that's a never ending process. I don't think that that ever, I don't think that for me, this, and I could be totally wrong, but I don't think that we ever arrive at that. I mean, we, our confidence can definitely be boosted. And so one of the things that, um, that has helped me in belief in myself and confidence and all of that is really doing the things that I'm afraid to do. It took me two years. To do a video it was it took when I first started posting on Facebook it took me a long time to hit the post button I would I would get my post all prepared and get it all ready and I would look at it and make sure that it was all right and I'm telling you what it took me a long time to hit post because I it was just that fear of what will people think and you know that con that fear of man and fear of man is can be devastating. It can destroy us if we if we let that be. And so I have learned that, um, and you see it a lot. You know, you do you do the things that you're afraid of. And um, so if if I have if I have that kind of stuff, I push through. And then when you're done, you kind of have that little adrenaline rush. It's like, whew, I survived that. And then the next time, you know, I'm still nervous. Even to today, I get nervous on Tuesdays when it, because I know that I'm going to be on, a, on the Zoom and it makes me nervous. On Wednesday morning, I feel like that is my weekend. It's like, <laughs> I, I feel like I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I did that part and it's like, take a deep breath and, and then I can move on and do other things. So I realized that I've been holding my breath through that unease because it, I'm not comfortable with it. It makes me uncomfortable. So I, I, I really think that you, you just push through. And like Curtis says, everything that we do in that way, every no, every action, everything that we do, it's all practice. None of it's going to kill us. It's all practice. It makes us stronger. And as we move through and realize that, oh, it wasn't really that bad, then the confidence comes in as well. But I think a lot of it is that we, um, with the success and what we're doing in business, that we feel like we're not worthy. And that's a big thing that I think that a lot of people need to work through and get, get over that because... It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what you've done, what you're doing today. You are freaking worthy, period, just because. And I'll throw in another Romeoism. I love talking about her like she's not here. Uh, <laughs> Romy, everybody knows Romy's really big on language, and we hear a lot of these quotes about our words become our thoughts, and our thoughts become our actions, and our actions become our beliefs. But it's and it's really true. And and people tease me all the time. But you know when they say, "Well, I'm just not good at this." I say no. That is an area you have the most potential to learn in. Like it's, it's really, and I've even made a note here too, when I'm talking about giving a little bit of grace to your upline so that someday your downline will give it to you. You also have to give it to yourself. If you, if you were with someone and they were teaching a class and they said something wrong or they, you know what I mean? Or something came out and then afterwards they're like, Oh, that was just, what would you say to them? You would say, Oh my gosh, that was no big deal. Like they're totally not going to know that lavender and they used for that or whatever like you're gonna be like no big deal but when we make a mistake or something we're like I'm so stupid I'm so stupid I'm so stupid like everybody knew like so what like give yourself the grace that you would give someone else and 
not to go against what Romy's saying about doing things that challenge you, but also like every success you have is something that you're good at. Like if you're not feeling great about yourself, then do something you're good at too. And be like, look at me, I rock out. Like maybe I do really good webinar presentations or maybe I'm really good at like talking to the lady next to me on the airplane. Whatever you're good at, do more of it then. But be as kind to yourself as you are with other people. I agree with that. I know. Well, I didn't mean to be like, like, don't do things that you're not good at and bust through. I don't mean like, well, don't do those. But you know, like the rules are you can only quit on a good day. Yeah. So to me, is like you can only judge yourself on a good day too. There is a, um, I, I read it, and I think it was actually Tony Robbins that I heard it the first time, but I could be wrong about that. But it talks about people, people feel like, we feel like we need to be experts at everything. This well-balanced, we just need to be good at everything. And we spend a lot of time trying to be good at the things that we're just not good at. And so there is a fine line in there about as far as pushing through and doing what we're afraid of doing, but then focusing on what we are good at, build on that part of it, and if we have something that in our business, per se, that, that we're not really that good at, that's where the team comes in. That's where we get to draw on the strength of the people in our lives and, and to do that part of it and really focus on what you're, what you're good at. Was that a really long soapbox that helped you or didn't help you? <laughs> no, that was really good. That was really, really good. Thank you. <laughs> and, you know, Jim Rohn says we're the average of the five people we spend the most yeah. amount of time with. So make sure you're surrounding yourself with people that see how amazing you are as well. And I'm not saying you don't, because I really don't know the four people you spend the most time with. But I know every time I'm with you, I know you're amazing. So how could you? Oh, my gosh. You are, like, beyond amazing. Anybody that's in your circle should feel blessed, beyond blessed. Because you are awesome. You know, we all need friends that tells us our butt look really good in those pants. And you also need friends to be like, you know what I mean? Like, you kicked butt at that class. Like, so don't be afraid to have a little bit of a, like, you know, a friend that's going to tell you that. And then you be that for someone else, too. That's the team. We're all going to scratch each other's backs in a circle. That can there's, there's nothing wrong with ringing your own bell. Especially as women, that's so hard to do. We're taught to hard. self depreciate. Do not yeah. ring your own bell. That yeah. bio I had to post for this. Oh. oh, I know. I know. I had to have one. That's right. Mm -hmm. Learning experience. That's true. <laughs> Anybody else? Welcome to Counseling with Tracy and Romy. Uh, it was awesome, dear. <laughs> Marshmallow Unicorn Funland. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We are at an hour. So unless someone has a burning desire to share, we'll probably close. So that way it's not so hard for people to Can we to say look. burning? Is that compliant? Yes. You have occasional feelings of wanting to share. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. That was awesome. I really, really appreciate you being here. Thank you, everybody, for showing up and respecting Tracy's time for being with us. I really appreciate you guys being here with us. Um, I just, I need to find a dictionary that shows more words of appreciation and gratitude because there just aren't enough words for me to express how much I appreciate you guys. I hope you know that. I told somebody the other day, I don't, I don't blow smoke up people's asses. I just speak what I mean, speak what I feel, and I love you guys. I'm grateful for you. Always grateful for you. So... With that, we will close, and we'll see you next week. Oh, by the way, 
um, Wednesdays will be business tool giveaway, but I think I'm going to change it to personal development giveaways um, on my page. So if you haven't liked my Romy Clark business page, go and like that because you will have an opportunity to win on Wednesdays a personal development gift. Every month, Monday will be oils and every Wednesday will be a personal development gift. So share that, like my page. And so we'll, it'll, we're kind of moving into my Romy Clark page because I think it's going to be easier for everybody to kind of get general information there without you having to worry about putting them in rock stars if they're not ready to be in rock stars yet. So that's the goal. That's the plan. If you have any suggestions, shoot me a message. All righty. Awesome. Yay. See you guys next week. Thank you.